Good morning, guys. Brian's here. Today is Tuesday, December 26, 2023, and hopefully you're having a great holiday season. This is the weekly gamma exposure levels for the upcoming week. These are the levels from last week. And if you are new to the YouTube channel, I've been releasing these videos weekly, doing a recap and analysis for the previous week as well as the upcoming week. So what we have right here is I've already done the recap for the gamma exposure levels for last week, and you guys can see how price interacted with the gamma exposure levels. Like always, I like to start with the economic calendar for the week. Market was closed yesterday. It was Monday. It was Christmas Day here in the U.S. And now we have the major catalyst for the week is just Thursday right here. We just have a couple pre-market reports. And this one I don't really pay that much attention to, but just pointing out for you guys. As you guys can see, there isn't really anything else that's marked off as red. If we jump now to the gamma exposure, this is what we'll be using to plot the levels on our charts. But for now, I've already gone ahead and plotted them on my chart just because the market is going to be opening pretty soon. And I wanted to make this video pretty short, concise, and just get you guys straight to the information. Again, if you are new to this YouTube channel, just scroll back here and you'd want to check out, I'll leave the link for this in the description, but it's the how I prep for the week using gamma exposure levels. This is where I did more of a step-by-step -step explanation to exactly what I'm going to be doing in this video. But for moving things right along, if we take a look right here, this is the gamma exposure for the entire SPY chain. So all expirations, if they're not highlighted, it means quant trading app. This is the platform that's being used to generate this level. Full disclosure, I am the lead developer for quant trading app. As we take a look at the data right here, we can see that the dominant strike is 475, which makes sense. The current spot price or the last traded price for the SPY is 473 and 30 cents when this information was aggregated. This is 9 a.m. Eastern time here. And then we're going to get into the analysis for just this week. We can see the dominant strikes that stick out are 475 and 480 and not much interest really above that. So for now, again, I'm just glancing over this because I want to get straight to the levels for this week. We can see 460 is the strike price that has the highest open interest across all expirations. So we want to take note of that. And lastly, I like to take a look at the gamma exposure. So let's turn off the net gamma exposure and just take a look at the absolute gamma exposure actually. And we can see that things are a little muted above here. We do have that interest at 480. Whenever I say interest, by the way, I just mean it's an area of interest wherever I see some sort of spike on the chart. This is just a loose overview that I like to do. And the objective in this process is to be as unbiased as possible. I don't really like to project too much of what I think is going to happen. I'm just using this to understand where there can be key infliction points in price action, as well as to mark these levels on the chart. When I do look at this though, I like to see relative to the spot price, where is there a higher concentration of absolute gamma? And we can see it's to the left right now. So to the left would mean price pulling back. So this is 475. So between 475 and 470 is where I see the higher concentration of uh, absolute gamma. And wherever there's a lot of absolute gamma, that's usually where there's a lot of liquidity and price likes to be choppy around areas of a lot of liquidity. Then we can see this 480 strike. And again, it's pretty muted above that. So I'm going to take note of that. And then we have the premium right here. It's still pretty skewed with a lot of call premium versus put premium. Without even looking at the charts, you can pretty much tell that the market has gone very far. We generally see these levels will tend to balance out, especially leading into the major monthly OPEXs. So in this case here, the next major one would be the January monthly OPEX, but the really huge OPEX would be the one in March. So my expectation would be by March, the market would have some sort of a rebalancing. And by rebalancing, I'm expecting some sort of five to six percent pullback in the SPY. That's my own personal thoughts. It's not what the data is saying. That's just how I interpret this and what I'm expecting. So now if we take a look at the chart right here, this is a 15 minute time frame. As I said earlier in this video, I went ahead and just plotted the levels. So what I'm doing here is this 480. You guys will see this is green. You can see this 475 strike. All I'm doing is coming here and then deselecting all expirations. I'm checking off just the expirations I want to see, and then I'm running the same report. As you guys can see, this was generated about 20 something minutes ago. So just before, again, market is opening in nine minutes. So I'm just recording this pretty briefly, starting at the top down. What we see here, it's pretty imbalanced still for this week. So there's still a lot of call open interest. And this is just letting us know there were some calls that are now in the money that are outweighing the puts that are out of the money. Keeping it as simple as that, I've done a more detailed explanation video regarding how I use the option premium. I'll leave the link in the description for this video. It was a longer webinar and it covered majority of the questions that I would imagine you guys would ask. As we scroll down now, we can see that's the key strike for this week is 475. It is very dominant because it is the highest positive gamma strike. That's what it's letting us know right here when we hover over this. It is also the strike price that has the highest absolute gamma. It is also strike price that has the most open interest between puts and call 
calls combined. And it is also the strike price that has the highest amount of call open interest. So almost everything is lining up with 475 right here. And that's why on this chart, I decided to make it this very saturated orange goldish color because I really want this to stand out. It is in a sense a super strike for me. And that's one of the strikes that I'm going to really pay attention to this week. So I might run some sort of weekly iron butterfly and then I will decide if I want to make it broken wing or not. As the day progresses, maybe a couple hours into the trading session for the day, I'll want to make some sort of a decision. But I do know that this area of interest price will be likely to be pretty choppy around here or it will like or it will want to gravitate towards this area. So an iron condor probably covering around this area with this as the uh, center point might be a good idea for myself. I haven't decided yet. It is a four day trading week. It is the last week of the trading year. Anything can happen and I don't really want much risk on because a lot of us are still in holiday mode. So it's just, I'm going to decide how much risk I want to allocate for myself this week here. But I do want to take note of the significance of 475. As we move right along, the highest negative gamma strike is 470. And then we have the gamma flip at 469. So that's what's just on my chart. So, so N1 is the highest negative gamma strike. And then we have the gamma flip here. And then we, as we get into some of the little smaller secondary levels of those, if those are the primary levels, then I like to mark off some secondary, secondary levels. And that's why these are the ones that are dashed because they're not as significant to me i would expect price to you know break through them i'm not really expecting these levels to be hard levels but they do help also frame the blueprint for the week because if 470 breaks price might you know wick right down to 469 it might even dip a little bit below it before it bounces right back up it's not meant to be perfection it's about to just it's about just understanding where there's going to be key inflection points to create low risk, high probability reward type of trades, or in some cases, keeping us out of trouble if we can understand how the market trades across these gamma exposure levels. Again, if you're new to this, check out any of the previous videos in which, in which I've gone into much more detail regarding these levels. Now, if we, uh, what else do we want to take note of here? I have this marked off here is this, there's a lot of open interest at this strike and there's also a lot of open interest here. So if we jump back to the chart, you guys will see that this is where I just put this little blue area. You guys know I like to put blue around the high open interest strikes. In this case here, I could have put blue across this whole area because that's what I would call the open interest heat map. As you guys can see right here, this whole area has a decent amount of open interest over 90,000 over a hundred and something thousand so it's about this whole area but i didn't really want to mark off this whole big block i can just tell myself i can remember between 475 and 470 and rather keep my my uh, chart pretty clean so instead what i did was i just put this blue here and then i put the blue on top of 470 and i'm letting myself know that everything in between is where the price is likely to be choppy in this general area what i did do this time is a little different that you guys might not have seen is i just marked these a uh, couple areas here sometimes i will highlight where there's a a group of high negative gamma strikes or a group of high positive strikes but i didn't want to extend it out to the uh, full range of the week so all i'm doing is between 471 and 469 if we come to this chart here and you see this there's this clump of uh, high negative gamma relative to this week because as you guys as you guys can see there isn't really a lot of gamma exposure overall for this week it is a four-day week so that could be one of the reasons and again it is the last week of the year it won't be surprising if there's low volume this week but this is what I'm what I'm just marking on my chart here so that little red rectangle that you guys see and then I did the same thing right up here up to 478 so this little group of uh, positive gamma right here if we jump back to the chart all the way up to 478 so from 474 right here so from 74 starting right here to 78 so just i wanted to cover all of this uh positive gamma right here and then i just call this is where it just dropped off so that's why i just have positive gex drop and then we know that there's this is the highest positive gamma strike up here the drop sometimes you guys will see me label it as a cliff if we just take you know for example last week i had this as the positive gamma exposure cliff it's different that's when it is in my opinion and again i made up all these terms it's just as if i was explaining it to my niece or my nephew who are not even in school yet and i'm trying to explain it to maybe a, a someone under five years old or someone that has never seen the market before it's just if there's a lot of buildup of positive gamma and then it just drops a huge drop i will call that a cliff because it looks like a cliff to me it looks like there's a mountain of positive gamma and then it drops in this case here it's not really a cliff it doesn't really look that you know mountainous it just looks like it's just a slow climb up and then it just has this, this little drop and then there's another little spike right here and then the same thing that this isn't really the mountainous type of negative gamma in which we've seen before so it's just a little small drop and it's not that scientific i don't have the exact you know level i'm just looking at it relative to this week this these these spikes right here relative to all the other negative gamma strikes 
they're the highest. There isn't anything else that pokes out past this. 465 pokes out a little bit, and then that's about it. So in that case here, I marked off 465. It is the strike price that has the second highest negative gamma. And then I just marked off our second and third tier absolute gamma strikes, and that's just coming down here turning off the net gex and then just looking at it from a from an absolute gamma perspective and it's similar to the larger overall analysis right here where there's more absolute gamma to the left of spot price and we can see the same thing coincides with the this week and then this is our second highest absolute gamma strike if this is our first this would be our ag3 so that's why these are just marked off on my chart and things are pretty bleak to the upside regarding that but it does mean if price was to hold over 475 we would expect the same thing which it, it would it has been doing in the past few weeks to gravitate towards the next highest positive gamma strike as we marked off on our chart so how will I interpret that for price action? If price is hovering around here for today and it's staying above VWAP, then I will start looking at strikes, you know, butterflies to target here or some out the money, broken wing butterflies, something with a low risk, high reward. And then I would be looking for price to head towards here. However, I would not think price is going to break out over 478 unless, you know, there's some technical pattern. Of course, there's no way to tell what's going to happen with price action. But if price is above 478, then maybe you'll want to tap 480. But because I don't see much interest right now, above 480 i'm not really going to think or expect there to be much continuation i will expect price right now just based on the way things are looking to if we are holding above these two strike prices to stay within this range for the week however if we can't get above this then i would expect the price to just stay within this range it should be pretty choppy and then if price was to get below here and it is holding below here then i will expect some sort of continuation down to the downside here but for the most part it looks like all the attention is really right in this region there isn't really much in my opinion to expect on this trading week right now and then some other notes i guess i will leave for myself or how i decide to trade will probably be again some sort of iron condor i'll probably have some sort of out the money uh call butterfly and then some sort of put calendar something similar to what i did last week targeting both ranges and then probably run some sort of wider iron condor just because i'm not really expecting much volatility that is one of the ways in which i approach a lot of the swing trades for my week whenever i do this type of analysis market just opened so i'm definitely gonna have to <laughs> stop this video pretty soon and then jump into some of my of my uh, plans here for the week i have my tos by the way on delayed just to show see it took a 15 it took a few seconds before it even plotted the opening print because actually on my uh, mac i don't even care to keep real-time information on because i don't need it i'm not a micro scalper i can make my decisions half the time i'm looking at a 15 minute or a 30 minute time frame i'm also usually waiting for a 15 minute candle to close so i trade very slowly it's not it's not by any means flashy and once i do this analysis at the start of the week i come up with my game plan and i just make adjustments if need if need be as the week progresses last we can see right down here this is the highest put open interest strike of 460 highly doubt we'll get down below there but if price is holding you know below this then these are the levels to start targeting if price gets down to these levels then again these act as potential key support or resistance levels so that's just the simplest way to trade Treat these levels at the end of the day if price holds over 475 it has broken this potential resistance then i'm going to expect us to go up here price should not fly or accelerate very quickly up here because right now there isn't much momentum but then we take it in context of things do we have any sort of technical pattern is it going to be some sort of a breakout do we have some sort of you know ascending wedge do we have an ascending triangle that's where we compound some of our other knowledge that we know the market generally tends to be up more on the end the end of Fridays into Mondays. It's been that way for this week. I've done videos on that volatility suppression. I'm going to take a look at the VIX. What's the VIX doing for this week? I it had a little bit of a, a pop last week with this drop here, but then the VIX started becoming a little bit muted on Friday, and that's and that made things a little bit harder for beers to you know reclaim control after this little bit of a, a sell off here. Spy was able to come right back up to 475, and we can see 475 is just as significant for this week. Hopefully, this video helps you guys again at the end of the week or sometime throughout the middle of the week. I might do a recap again of how price action is trading, but for the most part, it's loosely covered here. It, once you've been doing this for a bit, it just becomes second nature you tend to get a real firm understanding of what price is likely to do around certain areas and that is one of the most rewarding feelings when we already have an understanding or an idea where most people are looking at a chart that is probably completely clear and then they're leaving their support resistance levels to be some sort of just what they see on their chart 
or some sort of uh, subjective approach because they're saying the market has to go up or the market has to go down or whatever you know type of other ways in which people will clutter their charts with uh, uh, in my opinion at this at this stage in trading for me it just ends up looking like a bunch of noise and yes you can plot a whole bunch of stuff you can go on to larger time frames and all this stuff but taking this approach has really helped me especially maintain a unbiased approach regardless of what I think the market should do or what I want it to do I know that if it is above this key strike what it means and then I also understand where are the regions in which I don't want to be too aggressive with my directional approach because it should be pretty choppy around here i'm not even going to bother looking for scalps in this region i would much rather target it where there is a track for price to actually accelerate in the direction in which i'm thinking sorry if this video wasn't as clear as some of the other ones again i suggest suggest watching some of the other gamma exposure videos that are a little bit more concise concise and i spent a little bit more time breaking everything down this was me just in a sense sharing my levels and some of my thoughts for the week thanks for watching guys and i'll catch you in the next one